to introduce someone to you who has 100% of the information. She's a U.S. Army major retired, a master of finance, and a financial advisor. The brains behind the Women Teach 4X movement, a coach and mentor of the Be Your Own Bank movement, the creator of the BYOB Cash Out Strategy. We call her Braid Whisperer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct privilege to introduce to you Ms. Tasha M. Dyer. Ms. Dyer, are you on the call? Yes, 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 I am. And thank you so much, Mr. Love Phillips. I just wanna I just wanna thank you for what you do, what you do for us. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the Jacksonville area, you definitely wanna make sure that you put yourself in a position to hear him speak. As a matter of fact, before we even get started with this evening's training, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of what is happening in Jacksonville, Florida this Saturday, this Saturday coming. We have, we have a Be Your Own Bank Expo. Be Your Own Bank Expo. As you can see, we're definitely going to be featuring Mr. Nez Vasquez. So not only are you gonna be learning the BYOB Cash Out, but you're definitely gonna be hearing from the co-creator of the High Frequency Forex himself. He is going to be featured here in Jacksonville, Florida. So if you're in driving distance, that means if you can get in your car and get there in a day, you wanna be in Jacksonville. You wanna be where you can be in the presence to get this information. This is not a presentation. This is an educational forum because when we talk about be your own bank, we're putting you in a position where you can think like a bank, act like a bank, and be your own bank. That is what this is. That is what is it about. So when you when you and when you register and you make sure you're present, you are going to put yourself in a position to where you you going to absorb nothing but education that day so you are in a position to be your own bank that is what the expo is and as you can see it's featuring mr nez vasquez so you definitely want to make sure that you are in jacksonville florida this saturday coming so i'm excited i'm excited about this week what this weekend is bringing i'm excited about the byob movement i'm excited about our family i'm excited so that that's that's where we're headed that's what that's what's going on now we've been cashing out we have been cashing out and as we cash out what i'm gonna do is um we've been catching pips we've been catching pips and as you invest in your training as you invest in your knowledge you can actually capture more than 10 pips you know we create we three rules I'm gonna share with you. Let me pull the let so let me stop. I was about to share something else with you. So let me stop this share. Let me do it this way. I want to share with you exactly what those three rules are. And I'm glad tonight is not a live trade tonight, but you already know if we see a trade, we're gonna take it. I want to share with you what those three rules are. So if we have guests on the call, we have individuals on the call, I wanna share with you. We caught over a thousand pips last week we're already over the 300 mark this week so we're doing phenomenal actually actually we just caught a trade so let me hurry up and share my screen make sure i'm sharing the right one so there we go the market's been consolidated but if you are already trading bam there you go gbp aud so as we get in the train, and I told you, if we catch a train when we're on the train to call, we're going to take a trade. We're going to take the trade. We're going to take the trade. So, um, yes, I'm going to take the trade. And then I'm going to tell you why I took the trade. So if we have a guest on the call, give me a second, and I'm going to tell you why I took the trade. So, now... Why? Why did we take the trade? Um, we took the trade because the, the BYB cash out is three rules. BYB cash out is three rules. What happens is the web analyzer calls for a trade, okay? 
Web analyzer calls for a trade, and it's a potential trade. So the what happens is when you learn the market, you learn how to scan the market. Now, I'm going to make sure I have my chat up because um, are you already know, raise your hand, you have a question. This is a training call. That's what tonight is. It is a training call. So ask your questions. You heard in the introduction, we're talking about the power of muted mic. So ask your questions tonight. This is a training call. So what the web analyzer does is it scans the market. As we learn the market, as we um, learn how to navigate through the foreign exchange market, what happens is we learn we learn that the market has what's called entry triggers. So we're learning we're learning those entry triggers, and the, so the web analyzer scans the market for those entry triggers. So it takes that heavy lifting off of you. It, it takes it away from you. So that's why I love this tool. That's why I love what the web analyzer does, what it is. I love it because it literally takes it all away from you. Now, this is that call price. This, this is what it is. And this is that the call price is that potential entry trigger. That's what it is. So you didn't have to scan the market. You didn't have to do the heavy analysis. You didn't have to do all of that. Now, what the be wild be cash out because now that you have entry triggers you have several strategies that you can select so if i go back if i go back and and i look you know i go back and i look and i see that there are several strategies that i can choose to apply to what that is. I, there are several strategies, whether I want to scout, whether I want to do intraday, swing, no matter what it is that I'm looking for, there are several strategies that you can pick, you can apply, you know, that, so as you see the BYB cash out is intraday and it's on short and scalping. So that's what this is, that, that's what we are. And we also have Mr. Jody Rogers and I'm a, I know we have I, what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm actually play this video tonight. I'm gonna play this video because I want you to understand the power of this tool. I, I definitely want you to understand the power of this tool. <laughs> Folks, I'm just absolutely amazed to know that I'm a part of a organization looking to empower and impact lives across the globe. I've been in this space for over 20 years, commercial banking lending, and when I look at the web analyzer in comparison to what the big banks of the world utilize, that web analyzer is equivalent, far exceeds the expectation that I was anticipating the internet experience on the investment market. So folks, for those of you who don't understand the magnitude of what you have your hands on, I encourage you, I challenge you to take a deeper dive and realize that literally you have in your own hands the power to become your own bank and allow us to be your partner, to empower you economically, financially, and leave a true legacy. Now I played that video because Mr. Rogers, who was also on this call, he's the visionary behind the BYOB movement. And you just saw that we have a BYOB Expo actually week. So you definitely want to make sure you're in a place at this expo, but I also want you to understand the magnitude and the power behind the tool that's, that you're looking at. And then when we talk about, we got the co-creator of another tool that's coming that so you want to understand the power of the tools that you have the resources that you have in your hand that will actually put you in profit so i definitely just want you to understand what you have access to and the power of what it is so when when you understand that this does the heavy lifting when you understand that what these tools do you don't have to sit and scan the market the way that you would have to without this. So you have access to do what banks do. So, cause the banks are not scanning the market the way that we would have to sit and mark up the charts without the web analyzer. So that's what this is. So when a web analyzer makes these potential trades or you type in what you're looking for based on knowing what session that we're in and the timeframes that we're in, 
what happens is now you apply a strategy, you pick the strategy that you want to analyze off of that, okay? You pick that strategy. Now, what is the BYOB cash out? What is that strategy and how do I successfully trade it? First things first is regardless of what the web analyzer calls, regardless of what it calls, regardless of what I type in there, the first thing I'm looking at is the stochastic. That's the first thing I'm looking at. I'm not looking at a candle. I'm not looking at the P stars. The first thing I'm looking at is the stochastic because I need to know what is the momentum? What is the momentum? And if the momentum is around the 80, now I know I'm looking for a sale. The momentum is around the 20, I know I'm looking for a buy. So that means that I need everything else to line up. I need everything else to begin to line up. That's, that's what needs to happen. So in this situation, when we looked at this, and see, I'd already been kind of watching this one. I have been watching a few of them. So I'm looking, the stochastic actually crossed over around at eight. And when I say around, you notice that it had already had momentum in a downward trend. So it's not that it has to be on the 80, it has to begin around the 80. The momentum has to start around the 80. And so I notice that I'm in a downward trend now. And so I'm in a sale position. Now I begin looking for the rest of what I need to take a trade. So I use Hikanashi candles. What the Hikanashi candles are, are for a sale, for a sale, I want a flat top. I want a flat top. And for a buy, I want a flat bottom, right? I want a flat bottom. What that indicates is a strong sale or a strong buy. Now, that's, these Hikanashi candles show trend. They measure the trend of the market. If I have a strong, the stronger the sale, the stronger the candle. You know, we had a nice push earlier. So with the market, so what that means, like right now, and then the market went into consolidation, right? The market went after the push, everything, a lot went into consolidation. So what does that tell me? These strong candles tell me I had a strong downward trend. I had a nice strong movement. I had a nice strong movement downward. But if I have shorter candles like these, they're not, they're not really doing anything for me. These are in consolidation. I don't trade consolidation. But what I'm showing you is the candles. They're short, which means that I do not want to touch these candles. These are not candles I want to trade. So even when I'm looking back, I know I'm looking at these candles and they're short sale candles. They even though they're Hikanashi candles, they're short, but they're I, they're my, my, my trend is not that strong. I'm in a downward trend, but it's not strong. So even like these green ones that are in a buy, look at, look at those candles. Those definitely tell me that these candles are not very strong because the, the body is very small. So, when this body is wide, the body is fat, I know that I have a much wide, I have a much stronger body. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm also looking for them to protrude. Each candle, I want to protrude just a little bit higher, a little bit longer than the one in front of it. So that tells me that my trend is still continuing. So just like as these protruded downward, that told me that my trend was still continuing downward. And once it stopped, you see this one is shorter. That told me that my trend was actually turning. My trend was changing. So that's what the Hikinashi candles do. The third rule is the PSR. The third rule I need is that PSR to flip. That's my third rule. And with that PSR flip is that's the parabolic stop and reverse. So that's a reversal in the market. So when that PSR flips, you notice how tight it is to the candle. When it's, you see how tight these are to the candle? That's not strong. Yes, it's gonna touch and flip, it touch and flip. They're tight, they're not strong. But when the further they are away from the candle, the stronger that push down is. Or, 
this one this one had a nice little momentum up but i also had a gap in between it before i went up i had a gap in between it before but then these got very tight to the candles which told me that i really wasn't getting a strong reversal this had a gap so i had a nice strong reversal this one had a gap so i was able to get some pips coming up and and so that you want to make sure you're looking at that nice reversal. So that that's the BYB cash out. So before we go any further, I want to make sure do we have any questions on the basic three rules of the BYB cash out? Hey, Mr. Dyer. Yes. Uh, could you just go over to PSR one more time? I think I got it, but I just want to make sure I got it. You, you said the first was the 80-20 rule, correct? And then yes. the second was the Kanashi candles either in the sell with a flat top and a buy and a flat bottom. They said the PSR. So could you just go over the PSR one more time? For the PSR, the third rule is the PSR, which is the flip. That PSR needs to flip. So just like the trade, this trade, had this PSR not flipped to the top for a sale, it needs to be on the top. For a buy, it needs to be on the bottom. So, you know, just like right now, we just got a new candle, right? And being that we just got a new candle, th that candle is ex is longer than the candle that it's in front of, and it's a solid candle. I mean, look at that candle, and you should actually be in profit. If we anybody entered that trade, when I said take that trade, you should actually be in profit. And mine actually closed out because I'm training. I can't, you know, I just did the ten pips, so mine just closed out. So. If you notice that it protruded longer than the candle in front of it, and do you see this is this is a perfect example of the trade of the cash out. That's a per this is a perfect example of the cash out. So what we did first when we logged on, and that's why I called this first because I saw it, is the he the stochastic flip. We had the Hikanashi. Let me see if I can make this big. I want to make sure everybody can see it. So the stochastic flip, and we had it in a nice downward trend. This, the the Hikanashi candle form, nice. Matter of fact, let me get rid of this arrow. Nice flat top. Nice, um, nice flat top. This one had a wick. But nice flat top, but it, and originally it did not have a piece on the top. The piece are was the piece are hadn't flipped yet. It's but the piece are does not the candle forms every 15 minutes because that's what time frame we're on a 15 minute chart. But as soon as that piece are flipped, you can get in the trade because what you're looking for, we had rule one, we had rule two, and ah, we got ah, we cashing out. I love it. So had rule one, rule two, and as soon as that piece are flipped, now that was rule three. As soon as rule three hits, you can take the trade. Now, what I will do is if it's at that 15 minute mark, sometimes I'll wait just a second just to see it, make sure I don't get a wick. But if you notice, when this Hikanashi candle form, these are not Japanese candles. Japanese candles form and Japanese candles. Japanese candles form and you know we got a nice strong downtrend, so they nice solid red candles. But they just they just have a lot of noise, a lot of conversation back and forth. So this is probably not a good example to use on this one because we got nice solid. But look at how they keep they'll move up and down. I mean, look at these. You see. You see a lot of back and forth in Japanese candles. And if you watch a Japanese candle, I mean, look at your MetaTrader 4 on your phone. They go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so you'll see all of that. However, Hikanashi candle form, it forms as a candle. It actually could have got more than 10 pips. Like I told you, I just did 10 because I'm trained. But Hikanashi candles form as a solid Hikanashi candle and they will protrude further depending on the strength of the trend. So they will go further based on the strength of the trend. 
but they form hikinashi candles. That's why I like hikinashi candles. They form on, as a strength of the trend, actual strength of the trend. So once that piece are flipped, you're good to go. You're good to get into that trade. That's hopefully that answered your question. But we in profit yeah. on the training call. Yes, you did answer the question. So does everybody understand the BYOB cash out? Do we have any other questions before we go any further? So Tasha, so um, with this one, it, you all we always look at the 15 minute, right? Not the five, not the one, just always the 15 minute. And who's speaking? Isaac, I'm sorry, Isaac. Oh no, that's okay. But yes, um, now if you, now what I will say about a five minute chart, is if you decide you can trade on different time frames. I I like to start teaching on the 15 minute. I like to focus on the 15 minute initially because it's so easy to grab 10 pips and cash out. But if you go to the five, understand that like let, let me let me back up a minute. With the 15 minute time frame, right? With the 15 minute time frame, I can have enough room for the 15 minute time frame, you know you can grab the 10 pips and cash out, but I also have enough room for the market correction, right? Because the market always does a pullback. So I know I have enough room with my stop loss because my stop loss is always above the PSR. If you notice, right? If you notice that you see how it touched the PSR? But it does not, it's not going to go outside of that PSR and it's not going to flip and go outside until it, the market reverses. So I can put my stop loss here and I have enough space in here for that market correction. So I can use smaller time frames for better entry points. I can use smaller time frames for that and I can use those smaller time frames to see the market corrections. That's what I can do. So if you do, I know a lot of people um, trade on smaller time frames, but if you do that, you want to, you have to make sure you cushion enough for that correction because it will knock you out of that trade before it, you, you have to give yourself that room. So I never, you know, you never really hear me start trading on the five minute. I mean, you can see a good entry point on the five minute, but even if you use the five minute for a tighter entry point, because you can use the five minute for a tighter entry point, you have to make sure you cushion it enough for that market correction. Because when it corrects, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. And um, so if, if I'm getting this, this right, so for, for a buy, the PSR has to be down for a buy and then for a sell it has to be up for a sell correct so this would be even though this okay this we wouldn't have traded right here but for example okay green candle piece are at the bottom red candle piece are at the top green candle flat bottom piece are at the bottom red candle flat top piece are at the top okay Okay. So thank you. Oh, so, well, you're very welcome. So, any more questions? Because I definitely want to take you guys to. I want. I want to highlight some stuff tonight. Any more questions on the BYB Cash Out? Got enough time for one more question? Make sure. I want to make sure everybody understands the cash out. One quick question, Coach. Um, so just to understand, because I normally wait for a candle to completely close, but I heard you say once I get the flip of the piece, or I can enter. So if the 15-minute candle is still rolling, let's say the piece are flipped at minute two, it's okay for me to go ahead and get in? Yes, and the difference is you might have previously been trading with Japanese candles, if you're waiting for a candle to completely close, 
if you notice, I'm gonna go to a smaller time frame because we just you got about let me go to a smaller time frame. I just want to show you how these candles form, right? We got about eight seconds and another candle is gonna form. These candles form how they form. So one second and watch what happens. See how that candle just formed? The can that's Hikinashi candles are trend candles. So because they're trend candles, they form how they come. Like that candle formed complete, right? Now, when you look at a Japanese candle, you see, you see how, look at the difference of a Japanese candle. Look at, look at, you see how, how it's moving. And now that's where you're looking, okay, I need to see what this candle is going to do, right? Is it going up? Is it going down? We'll see, what is it doing? That's a Japanese candle right but a hikinashi candle is the trend it's just straight it's straight trend and of course i went to the one minute because that's what we were in the time frame but i was just trying to show you exactly what what it is so now we're on a five minute so of course it'll be a little bit different but hikinashi candles form exactly what it is so now you see that one form so what that's telling me is I had a nice strong trend, strong trend, strong trend, strong trend, strong trend. This one forms small. So because this one forms small, it tells me I'm starting to get a correction. I'm starting to, the market is starting to shift. The momentum of the trend is shifting. Hikinashi candles, they, they talk trend of the market. So this is not protruding down. It'll kind of look like steps, right? Like this is inverted steps on the top. They just look like steps I can keep climbing. Once that stops, now I know my trend is shifting. So, and also look what my stochastic did. My stochastic is curving up. So I know that, look at my stochastic, it's curving. I know for a fact that now my, I'm, I'm looking, my trend is shifting. The momentum is shifting on this time frame. So I might still be in a downward trend on the 15th, because this is overall trend, but remember the market corrects. So we always have a market correction and I'll show you guys that in just a second. But this is where each time frame feeds into the, uh, the next one. So this is a market correction. The, the market is correcting into that other time frame. That's what's happening right here. The market is actually correcting into that next time frame. And so because the five minute is now in an uptrend, that's why the 15 is so much sure. The five minute is in that up, that's the 15 is in a downtrend. The five minute is starting to turn. So you'll see it there next. But that one minute, remember, we were pushing green a minute ago. So we were going green, which is a buy. That's why the five minute is starting to shift. And it happens on a, what happens on lower time frames, pushing into the higher time frames. So we're gonna start feeling that on the 15 minute after that. So everything happens on the lower time frame first and starts feeding into the higher time frames. But this, this is that um, market correction. So and what I meant, I don't even know if I'm gonna get a good one because of what happened earlier today, let's see. So when you see the market and you see the market, when you have that downward trend and you have that correction, you know, you had an ICC where you had an impulse correction, continuation, Correction, continuation, correction, continuation, correction. When you start seeing that, what you know, this correction is the the lower time frames turning. So I, you will see the momentum of the stochastic doing one thing on one time frame and it's doing something else on another. Well, this is that something else on the other time frame. That's that market correction. That's what that is. So that's what that is. So what I'm training on tonight is probably going to take more than one night to train on because we know that we get, when we start getting into our trades and when we start getting certain places in training, I'm going to change my share for you because um, when we start changing our um, trade, so tonight is actually going to be like a part one of a few nights of training it might be two it might be three based on how we are able to move through this but 
I want you all, I know we have created what's called watch lists when we're trading, but I want you all to be able to properly enter buy stops, sell stops, you know, capture more than 10 pips, things of that nature. Now, when you first start trading, you definitely want to grab your 10 pips and cash out and, you know, that's definitely where you want to be, but I definitely want you all to get to a point to where, you know, we're doing more than that. So you, you have your different level of traders. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint that I have first. So I want to, for some of you all, it'll be a refresher. For some, it will be new, but... Where is, it's not sharing, you don't see it. I don't think you see it. So I want to share this part of the PowerPoint because I wanna make sure that you understand these things. We've been doing market execution and you know, we, but on some of the calls, on some of the trades that we take, you know, we, we do a lot of market execution, but you can also do a buy stop, sell stop, buy limit, sell limit. But you have to understand what that is. You have to understand what, what, is, what is a buy stop? What is a sell stop? What is a buy limit? What is a sell limit? And so because when we open up our MetaTrader 4, there are actually five different ways we could place a trade. And if you want to maximize, see the BYOB cash out works across everything. It works across the, um, you know, we've been, we killing the US 30. I mean, we're killing it. We were, we're grabbing it. Um, I trade different times and, you know, I see results. I hear testimonies. I know what my account looks like. So uh, it works and it works across, you know, Forex. It's working across crypto um, indices. It works across the metals. So it works on everything. It works on the 15. It works on the higher time frames. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that everyone can definitely, okay, somebody else cashed out. Here we go. So I want to make sure that everyone can definitely take advantage of, you know, everything, the time frames, and um, making sure that everybody's um, able to maximize profit all the way across the board. So when you look at it, you have to understand what a buy stop is, what a sell stop, buy limit. Okay, awesome, awesome. We still cashing out. Keep putting them in there as we taking profit. We want, cause even on a training call, if we if we see it, we're gonna take it. I don't, you know, we see it, we're gonna take it. So, so sell stop, buy limit, and the sell limit. So understand that the buy stop is the order placed above price, and the price keeps going. A sell stop is the order placed below price, and the price keeps going. Now the buy limit is the order placed below price and then the price then goes up and the sell limit is the order placed above price and then the price goes down, right? So now this is an example of a buy stop. This is an example of a buy stop. So for example, this, I'm in a range. So even you in a range, you have, you, you whether, you're stuck in a uh, range, you're in a trend, no matter what, you have what's called support and resistance lines. And I wanna be able to show you on the chart, the actual support and resistance lines. So that's, that's where we need to be able to get to. So that's why I say this is, my, this is definitely gonna take more than one night. We're not gonna get through all of this in one night. But I wanna be able to show you on the chart the support and resistance lines because that's where you, the market talks to you. If I cannot stress enough, the market talks to you. The market tells you what's it going to do. You have to look left. The market repeats itself. It talks to you. And if you look to the left, you will see whether it's in a range, whether it's in a trend, no matter what it's at, it's got these points. It's got these lines, it's got these support and resistance lines that it still has to continually push through. It's gonna always talk to you. The question is, just like in any conversation, are you listening? I want you to think about something. How you do one thing is how you do everything. When you have a conversation with someone, are you listening to what they have to say? 
or are you listening to speak? If you listen, do you listen to other people? Or do you listen to the market? That's exactly how you're going to react. If you don't listen to other people, you're not listening to the market. You have to listen. The market speaks. It talks. If you listen, you will be very profitable. If you pay attention to what it's saying, you will make a lot of money. Understand, we ride the wave of the market. All we do is ride the wave. We don't force a trade. We don't push a trade. We don't do any of that. We pay attention, we listen, and we ride the wave. That's it. So you have what's called a buy stop. The buy stop, so what's happening is this icy movement in here, but I believe that the market is going to push through. I believe that the market is going to continue to push. But yet, just in case it doesn't, for whatever you're looking at, I do not want to get into this trade until after it pushes past this point. I do not want to get in the market until it breaks out. If it doesn't break out, I don't want to be in a trade. Because if it happens to come back down this way, if it, if, if it does not break out, and it, stay, it turns and goes back to selling, that I don't, I don't want to be in the trade, right? I don't. So you want to do what's called a buy stop. This is where I expect the market to move higher. Now, a sell stop is where I expect the market to move lower. So I'm at my support line, right? I'm at a support line. So see, and this one happened, like I said, it happened to be a trend. But you see, you got your highs and lows, right? I have still got my highs and lows in a trend, but it still can get caught up in this channel. It still can get caught up in here. But even when it does, it's the, the highs and lows are still going to be at these points, at these resistances, at these support and resistance lines. But what's going to happen is, oh, excuse me, what's going to, uh-oh. What's going to happen is you want to make sure that you place your sell stop below. You wanted to make sure it gets past that point, and that's where you set your sales stop, right? That's where you set it. So you expect it to move lower. Now, a buy limit and a sell limit. Here I am where I have my support and resistance lines. And now I'm in a range, right? I'm in a range. So in this range, right? In this range, I have my, in this range. What do we have? We have the candles moving. We have candles pushing through. And what happens is, is I have an expectation that the candles are going to push through, but I, I believe they're gonna come back down. So, but you notice, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to say they're not gonna push through, but you notice they always touch or they, uh, they typically touch. And when they touch, they're gonna turn around and come back down. So they touch and they come back down. Yes, they are gonna test, they test the line quite a bit, but when they touch, see that it broke into this line and then they touch, when they touch, when they touch the resistance line, you had an expectation that it turns around and it comes back down. And it's at that point that you want to maximize and you want to be in the trade. You don't wanna get into it before then because in a range, you can literally portray from, from the top to the bottom, to from the bottom to the top. You can trade in there. And so that's what you're for. You can within that range. So, and the mouse is just moving on its own. But that's what you're looking for. So I will set a sell limit order because remember, I'm looking for price to go up and come back down. For a buy limit, I'm looking for price to go down and come back up. So I'm looking for when the price goes up and comes back down, what I'm looking for is going to touch that resistance line, which means it has to pass that point and then it comes back down. And for a buy limit, I'm looking for it to come back down and then I'm turning around and coming back up. That's what I'm looking to happen. Um, someone's unmuted. Do you have a question? Say over the well into the night to give everybody a 
We are getting there. When using a buy, stop, sell, what time frame we're getting there. Um, that's why I said tonight's training is not going to be one night because it's going to be time permitting because we are already where well, we only have 20 minutes left. So this is definitely going to be a training that's going to take more than one night. And I, you know, I don't want to rush it. I want to make sure everybody understands. So here's a stop loss. Ms. Dyer, Ms. Dyer, could you go back to the other graph? Uh, just, uh, I have a question. On, on that one, you're saying the resistance is usually always on top, correct? And the support line is always at the bottom. Right. And you're saying before you do a trade, you should you should have the graph or the Hikanashi candles, I should say specifically, go below the support line. And then the resistance, it touches the top line. Is that what you're saying? For, a, for example, in this situation, these candles right here, right? These candles, at, when the candles were here, this was actually, this line, the exact same line was actually a resistance line. The resistance line is always at the top of what you're looking at. The support is always on the bottom of what you're looking at. However, when it broke through the line, when it broke through that line and we, it moved into this range, now the resistance line is on the top and the support line is on the bottom. But it's the same line. This line just went from being resistance to support. But it's still the exact same line. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, and of course, um, I'm not going to get into the stop loss and all of that tonight because we just, we just covered stop loss on how you actually trade that. So let me stop my share on that. Let me go pull up a chart. I'm pull up a chart. Let me do a new share. Pulling up a new chair. Okay, let's see here. So So we on the hour time frame, let's see. And what I typically, what you want to do is start looking for support and resistance lines, right? You want to start looking, and this is a range, and you want to start looking for those support and resistance lines. And you, you can actually visually, I can visually see them right now. But what I like to do first and foremost, when I, when, you know, start learning, I kind of like to go to the line chart. Look how much easier that is, right? Um, if that a, looks a little easier for you to see, let me get a 777 in the chat because I'm going to tell you what we're actually looking for. So put a 777 in the chat. Okay. So... When you're looking at the line chart, it's just going, it, it's, it just helps you see those points. So what I do is I come to you and now you don't want to, now let me, let me show you something. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to show you something because this is what you don't want to do, right? You don't want to get where you're marking up everything. And remember, you're going to have some zones. So you're just looking for the most touches, right? But so this is, I want, I want some zones, okay? I'm looking for that zone. I don't, I don't wanna mark up every single thing that's in there, right? I don't, I don't. 
because you'll see you'll see people that have all of this you'll mark up every single thing that's in there every single thing i don't want to mark up everything that's in there um because yes i can see that i had something i'll change the color on it right uh, let me change the color on it for you make it a little bit thinner but you can see that there was a uh Within there, they had like a little major point where it ran across some resistance as well, right? So that's that's kind of what happened um, as well with what was going on in there. But I'm gonna change it back to my candles, my Ganache candles. And now, can you see the zone? Is that a good color? Uh, we need to change the color. Is that a good color? If you can see that one, 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 I change the color. Because I can change the color. I want to make sure. Okay. Um, so when you're looking at that, and then you can always just kind of adjust it because you see you got all these little peaks. So when you when you're looking, what you want to start identifying is these support and resistance lines. So what I'm trying to show you first tonight before we start doing any other trading, I know. You're anxious, you're ready. I, saw, I got the comment earlier, and you're ready to do some buy stops and all this other stuff. Is you know, and I'm gonna drop us down a time frame so you can kind of see what it looked like on the 15 minute chart, right? Um, this is what we have been trading, so you can kind of see what that support and resistance kind of look like on that time frame, and you can kind of see what actually happens, and you see that it starts knocking on these support and resistance lines. And you can kind of, you see that as it moves and you see it actually starts hitting on these points. So as you start looking left, right, you notice that it's hitting on these points. It's moving up and it starts hitting on these points. So it'll test it and it'll try to come out and it's hitting on these points and it'll come down. But you notice I drew the yellow line because it's not a major one. It's like a dramatic one, but it's not the major one that we're looking for that's in this zone. But what you're noticing is that's still a place that the market gets caught up. It gets caught up there. So it won't move down past this point. When it gets to this point, it knocks on it and it turns around, right? We look left a little bit more. What's the market doing? It gets caught up on these points. So what's it doing? It gets caught up in these, it's like choke points. So I don't care how far we go back. It's like choke points, right? It's continual choke points as you just, you can just keep going back. You can just keep going back and you just go and it'll push through it, right? Even if I come here, I push through, what do you think is happening? These are people that, these are people that's in the market and they, they trying to knock you out of the trade, right? Um, is actually it's not the fact that that's what they're trying to do really is that's that's orders being placed that's that's the money remember we ride the wave of the market so this is where orders are being placed this, this is where things are happening within the market so we just have to understand what's happening so when we know what's happening we know that that you know we know what's happening and so where did I tell you stop loss go outside the piece are because we know what's happening. They're placing orders. You know, the, the markets is what moves the market. We don't move the market. The market moves the market. The market makers move the market. So they're placing orders. Where you stop loss go? Outside the peace arts. We know what's happening. And just keep looking up. Right? So we see these continual choke points. No point, you know those are opportunities that um even i was trying to find like you got a nice little head and shoulders when you start understanding market structure but even in the head and shoulders where is it at it is at the, the little choke points the, the support and resistance line so if i am breaking up that's me i'm breaking up so um that might be i don't know i'm in the same position same it's a possibility it is internet because I am on my main computer. So my apologies. Can you not hear me at all? 
Okay. I can hear you. Okay. No problem. Okay. You just fade in and out sometimes. That's all. That's not good. <laughs> that it could be the internet then. So, um, what? So I mean, so what you're seeing and what I'm trying to show you, and we'll we'll um get to where we mark up some more and. You know, so what we'll do, of course, Thursday is live trading, but what, what we'll do is we're going to get, I want to get you all comfortable with, so we'll get to marking up some charts and, um, well, you know, like I said, we'll mark up some charts. I'll show you, I want to show you how the candles affect the, the market because if you notice when they trying to break through, you start getting the long protruding candles that actually push onto the, the support and resistance lines. But you notice when you have that market correction, look at where it's at. For the most part, it's at, I mean, it's so much that happens on these choke points. So I call them choke points, but they're really supporting resistance lines. You have the little mini ones in between, but that's, that's what's happening in the market. That's, that's what we are. And so when you know, and that's why this is so important, because even if you look, what's going to happen, you got indications that this one is going to push through. You had indications that this, I mean, you got the stochastic, the PSR, the flip, I mean, and so, you know, instead of having to wait, you you got indications. And so this, this is where I want to get you all comfortable with, because if you know that I can take a trade, I can, I can push, you know, the PSR started coming through. So I know that I could take a trade and I know it was going to come to that support or resistance line. I know it was definitely going to hit that line. So... Um, as we, you know, as we start closing out this call, like I say, we'll start, we'll, of course, this is more than just a one part call. So, um, it, I just wanted to show you that and go back to the higher time frame. I know it's not as clean, I'll try to clean it up just a little bit, but you can see as you look left, you, you kind of see, you start seeing what happens. So even if you look at, like I said, where they do the correction, those highs and lows, those will actually be in those lines. So as it comes back up, I mean, even when it was trying to test that point. So do I have any questions? I mean, look right there. It, I don't care how far back you go. So do I have any questions or comments? Any questions or comments as we start wrapping this up so we can transition this call? I mean, look at look at where the consolidation started. Yeah, um, important resistance line. Um, Tasha, this is Lady Cat. Yes, ma'am. The continuation of this training is this going to be Thursday or next Tuesday? Uh, we're supposed to be live in the market on Thursday, and I want to keep with the continuity of the calls. So, we definitely will be trading on Thursday, but we um. I'm going to see how many calls this is going to take and kind of make a decision from there. But I want to keep with the continuity of the live trading that we do on Thursday nights. Because Tuesday night is designated for training and Thursday night is where we, be, where we are live in the market in the Asian session. Any more questions or comments? Questions, comments, as we close out. Yes, 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 CC. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I and I heard your testimony today. You've been cashing out, and I noticed how you did it. So we we um, what does Dr. Bife will call it? The the um the some consciousness. So we we were we were on the same thing today. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So it definitely will be um, marking up some charts, definitely will be, help you understand the support and resistance. And when you um, do the support and resistance, you will definitely, definitely understand what you can do. Collective consciousness. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I was looking and trying to say. And yes, we do have a 5 a.m. call. Yes, we do. So 
No questions, comments, testimonies. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let me see. 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. So, yes, we do. We had the question for the 5, but yes, we do at 5 a.m.